Hello, my name is James, and we're representing Frontier for Flight Safety and Evaluation. I'm here with Alyssa, Trent, and Alan. Okay, so this is our rubric, and it's out of 45 total points, and we have it organized in a fashion where it goes from perfect to imperfect, which means it can't fully, or it has some complications when it does the test, to partial, which means it doesn't finish the test all the way, to start, which means it can start, but it can't finish, and then no start, which means it doesn't finish. Then we have five different tests. We have rain, wind, humidity, temperature, and pressure. And these will all be separate tests. And this rubric right now is only a skeleton of what it could be. And it does not include any writing assignments or any other presentations. Um, so one other thing I want to add here is you know, these five tests here on the, on the lower part are the actual tests that the quadcopter will be performing. These top two, uh, they would overall just refer to how it handles in in all of the tests, uh, just in general conditions. So for these five, like Alyssa mentioned, they're greater all on the same scale. But these top two um, are graded in their optimal conditions for the first three points, and then adverse conditions for the last two. Next we have some of the flight safety regulations. These were pulled from the FFA, or FAA site and are their flight safety regulations for um, unmanned aircrafts. So generally, um, in summary, this is just don't go over 400 feet for, um, for safety reasons. If it goes out of the range of the controller or whatever, it could fall or it could interfere with other flying um, aircrafts. Generally, don't go near places where it could cause a safety concern as um, such as like fires, emergency scenes, airports, because if it goes near any of those, it could interfere with the personnel that are trying to keep other people safe. And also generally don't fly over crowds of people or anywhere where there could be large crowds of people, such as stadiums, because if for some reason it, there is a malfunction, you do not want it coming down and hitting someone on the head. And finally, just make sure it stays in your sight. That, if it stays in your site, you're more likely to be able to control it reasonably and not have it crash somewhere. The FAA site also included some airspace restrictions, like uh, flying in temporary flight restriction zones, which are areas affected by disaster or hazard. So if you have like a hurricane sweeping through an area or a chemical spill or a quarantine area, then you wouldn't want that UAS to be in the area. Uh, it is also illegal to fly a UAS in Washington, D.C.'s restricted airspace, although I don't think we'll have that problem here in Dayton. Uh, the special use airspace includes mostly uh, military operational areas, or MOAs, also referred to as AOs, or Area of Operations. Uh, I looked into it, and I couldn't find any restrictions on flying near Wright Path, which somewhat surprised me. Although, there are restrictions on flying near airports, like Dayton International. You can't fly, or if you're flying within five miles of the airport, you need to contact the air traffic controller and let him know that you're in his airspace. So, um, are there any questions you guys have? 